Hello everyone. My name is Tina Roberts. I use she, her pronouns, and I'm graduating from DePaul with a Master's of Education in College Counseling and Student Affairs. I decided to do my capstone project on student leadership development because I'm a co-advisor for a student government association at DePaul. Today's leaders are made, not born. Through my research, it became very obvious that college provides an opportunity for students to develop their leadership skills. As you can see, I enjoyed exploring Comives literature, and I apologize if I'm not saying the name correctly, but they really stress the importance of creating a space for students to understand who they are and who they want to become. As an advisor myself, I think it's my responsibility to provide guidance and a space for these conversations. I advise 32 students in the Student Government Association. That means I meet with each student for 30 minutes every other week throughout a 10-week quarter. To implement this intervention, I use the first five to 10 minutes of each meeting. The students are very diverse in age, race, gender, religion, and background. I created a curriculum designed to help students name their strengths, understand their weaknesses, and find practical ways to improve their skills. My intervention promotes self-awareness and reflection in order to build metacognition skills. My hope is that this will make the process of growing easier in the future. As student leaders, it's normal for them to build leadership skills through their role, but I wanted to make that growth more intentional with this intervention. My curriculum is broken down into four stages, one for each time I see the student. In stage one, I ask the student to grab a pen and paper and answer the question, who are you when you're your best self? And who do you want to be as a leader? I then asked the student how it felt to reflect on these two questions and actually write down the answer. As homework, I instructed the student to take the 16 personalities test at home and read through their results. In stage two, the student and I reflected on their 16 personalities results. I asked which components stood out to them, what did they agree or disagree with, and how can they use their unique strengths within student government. Then I assigned the student to take the VIA character strengths test before our next meeting. In stage three, I asked the student to reflect on both assessments. We discussed what they believe their strengths and weaknesses are, along with naming skills they'd like to improve. Through this discussion, the student determined one skill they want to practice, and together we brainstormed ways that they can do this before our next meeting. In stage four, the student shared how they practiced their skill. We talked about how it felt to actually name a goal and follow through with it, along with what they can do to continue practicing outside of student government. Of the 32 students I met with, 23 of them completed my assessment after stage four. I asked them several questions on a one to five scale, with one being not true and five being true. The piece I found most interesting here is the first and fourth question. Prior to this process, it was normal for me to reflect on my leadership skills. The data shows that this was not very true. However, after this process, students moved up to a 4.1, stating that they are likely to continue reflecting on their leadership skills. I also provided an open-ended question for qualitative data, asking students if there is anything they'd like to share about the process. I saw themes of reflection, authentic leadership, and growth. One student stated, I really appreciated the opportunity to take a step back from my leadership style and focus directly on reflection and the ways that I best work and engage instead of merely performing. I really appreciate this quote because it's saying that instead of just showing up and checking off your to-do list, the student was able to actually pause and think about what they're doing and what they want to be doing. Um, I believe that that intention really, really helps with their growth. After analyzing the data, I recommend that advisors and mentors create space for reflection and plan these conversations. Sometimes it can be hard to squeeze in intentional development when you're already having like so much on the agenda, but I was able to help students with only using five to 10 minutes every two weeks. That is not much time. <laughs> so imagine what can happen when students are provided with more frequent conversations and learning moments. Thank you so much for learning more about my final capstone project. If you have any follow-up questions, please feel free to reach me with the contact information listed below. Thanks again and congratulations class of 2020.